بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I begin in the name of Allah the most merciful the most kind So today we are very honored to have today we are celebrating the birth of, of the last and final messenger of Muhammad peace be upon him. And I would just say in Urdu that we talk about the teachings of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. That how people change their religions, how people change their beliefs and they came and embraced Islam. And we, we talk about those people, those companions of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him who did that 1400 years ago, more than 1400 years ago. But we still have amongst us people like Dawud Barabu, people like people like Idris, what? who have embraced Islam, who have changed their religion. Why? Because of this person from Muhammad, peace be upon him. And, and, and Dawud Talabu, he embraced Islam about 27 years ago. And he was a great friend of our father, Hazrat Muhammad, Hazrat Muhammad, peace be upon him. And, and after his follower, Hazrat Professor Fatih Muhammad, may Allah have mercy on his soul, that he, after for a long time, because our father was here for nearly 25 years, and he, he was a great friend of his. And these new Muslims have done a great work in this community. And whenever people embrace Islam, we actually put them in touch with these new Muslims because people uh, who embrace Islam, they've gone through. We, we cannot imagine what they're going through in terms of that, in terms of that, you know, they've given up their perhaps what a world they knew. And they have embraced, they have come into a new world. And these new Muslims, they have, they have all the members of these new Muslims, they're also going through those, those new things. Then they're embracing a new world. So people like Dawud Talabu, people like these wars, they're great asset to this community. And we are really honored to have those people amongst us today. And inshallah, I like like that. I'd now like to invite Dawud al who will come here and say a few words, share his thoughts, and then after that we'll have Asr prayer. And inshallah, please welcome Dawud al don't worry, I'm, it might look big, but uh, it's actually very short. I have to apologize, I couldn't join in the, the singing uh, because I've uh, only been a Muslim 27 years, I've only had no Urdu, so forgive me about that. I should introduce myself, uh, Dawood Talbot, or as sometimes, uh, you know, as I didn't mention, David Talbot, it doesn't matter, I'll answer to, to either. But uh, I, I'd like to point out that I'm not a scholar, uh, having gone away somewhere and studied Islam. Uh, I'm like the majority of people here, I have a family. Uh, and I go to work now to five, and I bring them up the best I can for, in the guidance of the Quran and the example of the Prophet Muhammad. So the thoughts I may raise today, I want you to, if you cannot understand them or you disagree with them, please don't argue with me as though I'm a scholar. Uh, please refer it back to Imam Hafiz Azim, who will then. Uh, Tell you where I've gone wrong, or clear it up, or make it clear. I wanted to ask myself a question before, when I was sitting, wondering what to say, and maybe to ask everybody here: that is the saying 1,400 years ago relevant to the problems and, and difficulties we have in today's life here in Leeds? And uh, some of the hadith uh, are uh, you know, strange initially to, to grasp what they want, what is meant by it. For example, there, there is a hadith which uh, saying of Prophet Muhammad uh, where he said, uh, trust in Allah, but tie your camel. And uh, well, I'm looking today, we don't have any camels. <laughs> so has it got any relevance at all to things like this? But then, if you look back to their time, there were people who were in the presence of this great human being. And when he just said, trust in Allah, that, that was enough for them. They could just accept that. But he said, well, also, tie your camel, you know, we take precautions. And I think today, 
those of us who come by car, I don't think we've uh, left it unlocked with the cars, with the keys in the ignition. We, we don't think that's sensible. So I think even today, these messages ring true. We just have to look and think and ask our imams sometimes, what, what does this hadith mean? And what can I understand? What can I grasp from it? What can I put into my life? Another question I was asking myself was, if the Prophet was here today amongst us, would, would he be happy today? You know, we've got a beautiful mosque now from the old one we had up the road there. It's much more better here, comfortable. It's lovely. And we have uh, our community center now. We can uh, hold our weddings, funerals, and all our activities. But I was asking, is that, will he sit back like we do and say, yeah, that's fine. Nothing. You know, we've done it now. And, uh, but when you, you read the Hadith, and when I was reading the portion of the last sermon when the Prophet Muhammad was on his final hajj, and he, he asked, he explained many things, but one of the things he asked is, he said, yes. He said, all those who listen to me shall pass on my words to others, and those to others again, and may the last ones understand my words better than those who listen to me directly. I know we, we, we don't know if we are the last ones or as it refers to the others. So we, we were just taking, perhaps we are just the others, we cannot be sure. But it seems to me that he's asking us to carry this message to the people of Leeds in, in, in any way we can. You know, not to uh, just say, oh, we've got the mosque and we've got all our activities, that, that's fine. And uh, you know, so these are some things, thoughts that, that came to me. And finally, this. Uh, you know, we have a, there are wars in the world and there are problems. And we, we tend to quite easily just to say, oh, the West, and, and it's all evil people. But I don't think that's our, what we find in Leeds. We, we find some good people, bad people, uh, and people indifferent. And the final thing to say, people used to come, or people did come to profit. And they were under a severe test at that time. And he's, they said, oh, the Prophet pray and curse these people. And the Prophet said, here, yeah, that I have not come to curse people, but I have come as a blessing. So these are just a few things, uh, uh, thoughts I had, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, I would. Uh, those who are unhappy, then please, as in, I'm sure you put it in a better context for one of your study. And thank you on behalf of Dishan Muslim for inviting me here today to speak.